Hi everyone, welcome to Watch Hags. My name is Ken. I'm David. And behind the camera as always, our buddy Wilson. Welcome to part two of our homage to Tudor. Today we're going to take a look at two models that we feel are really unique in the line and discuss them in greater detail. First, the Pelagos, and the second, the Black Bay. So David, tell us a little bit about one of your favorite ones amongst these two models. Sure. I think from previous episodes, everyone is very well aware that I like sports watches. Mm. And I really like dive watches yeah. as well. But I would say that not only do I like to desk dive, you know, we're out and about, <laughs> but I actually do take all my dive watches diving, yeah. right? And so when I happened across the Pelagos, which came out back in, I think it was 2015, mm -hmm. what really excited me about what Tudor has done is the technical enhancements to their original yeah. uh, dive watch to what you see today. Glad to share that we have the Pelagos in this, uh, almost like a, um, this, not quite a navy blue, but a sea blue, if you will, mm -hmm. but then also a more um, interesting one as well. The Pelagos in the left-hand diver, as you can see, the crown has been shifted to the other side. From a technical standpoint, this is probably the largest dive watch that Tudor has made. Yep. So measuring at 42 millimeters from the nine o'clock to three o'clock, not including the crown, about 14.3 millimeters thick, and about 50 millimeters lug to lug. Mm -hmm. Now these may seem or sound rather kind of daunting dimensions on people's wrists that are sub seven inches, which I am. I'm about a six and three quarters inches. But given the fact of its geometry of a shorter lugs and a very much a lighter case because mm -hmm. of the full titanium construction, mm -hmm. this wears extremely, extremely well. So when you talk about these capabilities rated at 500 meters. It does have a helium gas escape valve, which for normal mortals and normal uh, recreational divers, <laughs> you're really not going to use it. Yeah. Right? But it's there just in case if you do become a saturation diver and you have to spend weeks or maybe months on end at depth and then you have to resurface. The helium escape valve will allow the smaller molecule of helium to escape without popping out or exploding the watch itself. But one other feature of the watch that I was totally blown away with mm -hmm. when Tudor came out is the clasp. This by far is probably one of the most interesting design and yep. most comfortable clasps, mm -hmm. primarily around the fact that it has these independently adjustable micro adjustments that you can do on the fly. But then it, there's one setting where it's a spring looking loaded right. mechanism. Mm -hmm. So it actually can expand on your wrist without yeah. you having touching it. Mm -hmm. And for those during the summer months, whether you're out and about or even when you're diving, this clasp will expand on its own. So for people who are diving and you want to wear it over your cuff and or your wetsuit, it has an additional expansion, the typical expansion leak that opens it up even further if you yeah. need more from the bracelet than what's already there. You know, all the engineering behind this thing really mm -hmm. has to me, elevated the Pelagos to this new level. And some of these features you don't even see on other brand watches yeah, yeah. just because of the historical association. Mm -hmm, People mm -hmm. will look for this in, in a Submariner or in a Sea Dweller, but quite frankly, you don't find, especially in all titanium, in a automatic adjusting uh, expansion on any other watch at the moment. So mm -hmm. really excited about what the Tudor has done yeah. uh, with the Pelagos. So it became quick and no-brainer once I did a little bit of research, but when mm -hmm. I tried it on, I love it. Yeah, that's why yeah. I have two. <laughs> what about you, Ken? So I also like the Pelagos. I'm a desk diver, so I don't go anywhere near your depths, uh, David. But you know, it's it's a beautifully executed watch, right? The the face is so nice easy to read, it's got the snowflake hands. It has Rolex DNA, but it's clearly Tudor. That's very unique. Yep. And it is on the big side, but I think this is executed in titanium. So it's so easy to wear and so comfortable, right? The technology that goes into the class in particular just makes it a phenomenal watch. It's something that, you know, you could easily wear to a holiday, beach side, mm -hmm. uh, on the weekends, and if you don't have a very serious workplace in terms of clothing, it's a very nice watch to wear. But to me, I find it a very attractive watch. Yeah, very versatile, I agree. And one last thing I do want to call out about the Pelagos is that on the bezel, in traditional dive watches, 
especially from, mm -hmm. from Tudor, even from Rolex. Mm -hmm. The bezel used to be made from aluminum. Now, what you have here is you have a ceramic bezel, yeah. right? Ceramic bezel that's also quite alumed very well. Yeah. So even low light visibility on this watch is fantastic. So yeah. I'm a big fan and I look forward to many years of wearing this above water and hopefully more time under the water as well. Yeah. And David, you raised a nice point about the materials. You know, ceramics is a nice material for scratch resistance. Yeah. It's, it's, a, it's a lovely thing. It, it lasts longer than aluminum. Mm -hmm. um, and then I, I know I mentioned about the titanium construction. And it's, apart from the weight, it's also a nice matte tool flavor to, mm -hmm. to the watch. I think the two very unique materials to go to watch. Very, very nice. Yep. Again, I was quite excited when I saw mm -hmm. what they came out with, which is the Black Bay. Can you tell yeah. us about the Black Bay? Well, to me, this is my favorite watch, the Black Bay in their collection. Once again, it's got a lot of the Rolex DNA, but clearly a Tudor. You've got the big crown. You've got the snowflake hand. In some models, you've got the rose, you've got the smiley face font placement at six o'clock. So it's a lovely watch. This one, I mean, I could easily see being a classical seven day watch, or if you're gonna own one watch in your collection, there'd be this one. I could see this on the wrist of someone in the boardroom, you know, holiday in the beach side, and even diving, maybe not to too deep a depth, but easily fulfilling all those needs and just needing just one watch. It's an amazing timepiece. They've got a few different versions. The original one was released in, in 41 millimeters, and now they've got one which is the Black Bay 58 at a 39 millimeter mm -hmm. size. It's just such a elegant size, fulfilling a tool watch, but also doubling up as a watch that you can wear even in a very formal office. It's just mm -hmm. a phenomenal model. Yeah, and one other thing I was really surprised at when I first picked up mm -hmm. my Black Bay, is the numbers don't always tell the exact truth of it. It having a 41 millimeter case, about a 50 millimeter in lug width, it's the geometry. Again, I think Tudor did a really good job of paying attention mm. to the overall geometry of the case, primarily around the length of the lugs, and uh, then the bracelet itself, it just fits so well. And I agree with you, Ken. I mean, you know, for those that are considering it, you know, Ken's wearing what he would wear to work, talking to executives, and he can easily be carrying this on with him. But at the same time, for myself, I could be wearing a short sleeve out and about, yeah. and I think it looks just as Yes, yeah, totally nice. agree. Yeah, totally fantastic. agree. One of the other elements of the case design that's unique from Rolex is that Tudor's now also put different angles into the case as opposed to just a one smooth angle. So I think that's also an, adds a very visual dimension to mm -hmm. Tudor that you don't see in its sister brand. So I think that's another very nice addition as well. Yep. Um, I know earlier we were talking about that sometimes we get a little confused as to the whole lineup of, mm. of these watches at yeah. Tudor. The weight that I'm keeping it straight is that for 41 millimeter, it is the Black Bay. Mm -hmm. Right for 39 millimeter, it's the Black Bay 58. Yeah, and then of course on the larger case size, right, you have the 41 millimeter Black Bay, mm -hmm. but you have it in a stainless steel with a stainless steel bracelet that you see right here. You also have in the 41 millimeter on their own creation of this fabric strap. And you also have variants where it's, it has a bronze case, but it comes yep. with a fabric or leather strap. Then also they came up with a new all black Black yeah. Bay as well. Mm -hmm. And then on the 39, like the one you have, right, they have obviously the one with you have is a stainless steel yep. and a stainless steel bracelet and what else have you seen in that side that and you like they've got it in silver now yes. they've got it in bronze they've even got it in precious gold mm -hmm. right but to be honest with you one concern that i do have is that there are now more than 10 variations of the black bay across that model i think that's probably deviating a little bit from the golden formula of rolex i can't say that i would agree to a need to have so many models mm -hmm. but you know who am I to say that? But it's certainly something that I feel is a little bit too much. Mm, okay. One thing I'll say is when choosing something out of their lineup, again, go back to you know, what you like. You know, don't get too pressured into what you see influencers talking about. And just going back to what you like, yeah. how you're going to wear the watch. You're going to dress it up, dress it down, or you want something that's more universal. And David, one of the other unique things about the case and, and also bracelet of this new lineup from Tudor, I think firstly, they've added the additional facet to give that additional visual mm -hmm. identity to the case that's very different from the smooth lines you see with Rolex. Mm -hmm. And on the 58 in particular, I mean, it's a very nice bracelet, but what's unique about it is just having these rivets on the side here adds another visual texture that uh, you know, just makes it such a perfect ensemble. 
Interesting. Um, you said there's two things. Now, I will agree with you. The additional <laughs> facet on the side of the yep. case is a really nice touch that, that Tudor has implemented. However, on the bracelet, mm. it is very comfortable, but it is a faux rivet, meaning <laughs> that you can't actually take out the rivets, yep. uh, unlike the original bracelet that you saw from Tudor and even Rolex yeah, back yeah. in the 60s and 70s. Now, some people will say, well, it's not even real, but quite frankly, you don't need them. So, you know, I'm going to have to say thumbs up on the facet <laughs> and kind of like horizontal yeah. on the yeah, rivets on the bracelet itself. Well, spoken like a true tool watch man, uh, David, <laughs> and here again, we'll have to agree to disagree. David, thank you very much for your company over these two episodes in our homage to Tudor. Really enjoyed the conversation and to hear your thoughts about it. Thank you very much to everyone as well for being with us today. Please let us know what you think. We would love to hear your feedback, so do drop us some comments. Smash the like and subscribe button and tell us what you'd like to see in a future episode. Until then, May time be on your side. We're the Wash Hags.